Championship. Coming up on ESPN Championship Karate. Sheridan Lancaster Golf Resort and Conference Center. This one is scheduled for 12, the FFKA World Light Middleweight Championship featuring Kevin Whaley L and Rick Rufus. Hi everyone, I'm Pat Scanlon, a little short on voice tonight, but plenty of good fighting ahead. My partner on the telecast, the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Jeff Smith. Jeff, interesting matchup here. Rick Rufus is one of the great names in the sport of full contact karate. Well, he is a great name, and he's been around since he was four years old. He's been doing karate. He's now 23, so he's going on 20 years in the sport of karate. And, uh, of course, he is our current middleweight champion, and sometimes these champions want to collect world titles. And if they can drop down a weight or go up a weight, they're excited to do that. And so when this opportunity presented itself, Rick Rufus was uh, eager to take advantage of it. Well, Rick Rufus's opponent is Kevin Whaley L., a bright young man, 20 years old. Now, Rufus is 23, Whaley L is just 20. The question though, does Whaley L have the experience to handle Rufus inside the ring? Well, Whaley L is trained by Kelly Croy, a man who fought Rick Rufus twice in his career, losing by decision. So we asked Kevin if uh, Croy's help would be a factor tonight. Well, he fought, like you say, he fought Rick Rufus twice. So I'm somewhat aware of the type of style he fight from training with Kelly. And uh, I give him credit as far as being a good fighter, but I don't believe he trained no harder or wanted no better than myself. So, you know, it's up for grabs, and we're going to do what we got to do today. What kind of style do you expect? From Rick Rufus or myself? Rick Rufus. Well, I, I just expect, uh, from what I hear, say he's a good kicker. He likes to move a lot. So I plan to just keep, you know, relentless pressure on him. You know, we just stay on top of him. I feel if I stay on top of him, it's going to be a good, nice fight. How do you feel going up against uh, a more experienced, a more veteran fighter? Although you're just uh, three years younger, he's got many more fights than you. True, but I feel as though uh, the, record is, the record is just a number. It's in the mind and in the heart what really counts. And like I say, I don't believe no fighter in America trained no harder than me. I've been training since April 1988, I mean 89, five days a week, weekends off, running five miles every day, you know, and I'm ready for it. I took the fight on short notice, but I've been training since April, going on almost a year. So I'm in tip-top shape. Well, Jeff, how important is it for Kevin Whaley L to put behind the image of Rick Rufus as a champion and go out there and take the fight to him in the first round? Well, it's very important because sometimes somebody with that kind of experience can intimidate you to a point where you do not fight your fight. After listening to uh, Kevin on the interview and talking to him today, uh, he doesn't seem to be psyched out by Rick Rufus. He says that uh, he's like any other opponent. He trains uh, just like him, and he feels that nobody has trained any harder, th harder than him, and uh, he doesn't feel Rick Rufus has trained any harder than him, and he feels that he can take this title because he's in condition, he's in shape, he wants it, he's hungry. Well, Rufus has only lost one fight in a 31 and one mark. He lost to Mark Petrowski. And earlier today, I asked Rufus what's happened since he suffered his first loss. Well, I guess after that point, after I lost, um, I let too many things from the outside interfere. And uh, in order to be the best and make sacrifice, you have to just put everything else out of your mind. And if you're going to be a world champion and you're going to take it to the top, nothing can interfere with that goal. Is it difficult dealing with the uh, distractions uh, outside of the ring? 
Yeah, um, you know, I have a new management uh, group, promotions uh, associate group. They deal with everything. And trying to be a fighter and a manager of your own, it just doesn't work because you got people ripping you from this way, ripping you from that way, and they're always trying to get the best of you. Now, you fought uh, Kevin Whaley-L's trainer, Kelly Croy, twice. What do you think Croy will tell him about you? I don't know if that really matters because Kelly Croy fought early in my career at the very upstart when I was five, six, seven fights, and uh, you know I've trained, I've uh, changed dramatically since then, my style, and, and uh, you know, I don't know what their their game plan is. Well, Rick Rufus did not lose a fight between 1984 and 1989. Jeff, you're a former champion. You had a long string of wins. Will there be any self-doubt when Rufus gets into the ring? Well, if anything, it's not self-doubt. It's after you lose one after that long a time, you're very hungry to get back in there and take it out on somebody. And uh, Kevin could be the man that's going to get it taken out upon. But Kevin's instructor, Kelly, uh, since he has been in the ring twice, he at least knows how to train Kevin. He knows what to expect out of Rick Rufus. So that's uh, one plus in Kevin's favor. Of course, Rick has never seen Kevin fight so that's one minus in his favor but when you take the experience of a Rick Rufus you take his world title that's a lot of pluses uh, Kevin has a big job ahead of him he said he's gonna take it to him he's not just gonna sit back but he is gonna take that title away and if he fights that way we could have an upset all right let's take a look at our fighter head-to-toe comparisons Kevin Whaley L at 20 years old three years the younger to Rick Rufus, height the same, Rufus two pounds heavier, did come down, remember, from the middleweight to fight in the light middleweight division for this fight. Arm reach, the advantage to Kevin Whaley L, leg reach advantage Rick Rufus, the records though, look at the experience. Rick Rufus, 31 wins, one loss, Kevin Whaley L, just 13 fights, 11 victories, and Rufus with an almost two to one advantage in knockouts, Jeff. That tape uh, tells a few plus or minuses there, and of course the, the leg reach uh, and arm reach, they offset each other because one is longer on one than the other, but I think where this fight is really going to be won uh, or lost is in the trenches. If Kevin can get inside of Rick Rufus, Rick Rufus has been known to knock people out when they try to get inside of him. That's his style of fight. He likes to move. He likes to be elusive, and he will knock people out trying to come inside, but if Kevin can get inside, and make him miss on those initial moves, then he might have a shot at it. Okay, well, it will be Kevin Whaley L and Rick the Jet Rufus coming up. 12 rounds for the FFKA World Light Middleweight Championship. Stay with us. Lancaster Golf Resort in Conference Center in beautiful Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Of ESPN Championship Karate. These fights are sanctioned by the Pennsylvania Athletic Commission, Commissioner Howard McCall, and the FFKA, Terry Nye President. Officials at ringside, Greg Schraub, Executive Director, and George Miller, Deputy. Our judges for this fight, Mike Gerhard, Marvin Preston, and Gene Kockenauer. And our referee, Mr. Paul Kears. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's throw some dynamite. This fight is an FFKA 12-round World Light Middleweight Championship bout. Introducing our principals in the red corner. He's from Taylor, Michigan. He's 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 162 pounds. His record, 11 wins, 2 losses, and 9 of those wins by knockout. Please welcome, in the red corner, Kevin GQ Oiliel. In the blue corner, he's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He's 5 feet 11 inches tall and weighed in at 164 pounds. He has a record of 31 wins, only one defeat. 17 wins by knockout. Please welcome, in the blue corner, Rick the Jet Rufus. Well, a well-defined upper body for Rick Rufus. You can see how he's been accumulating wins all these years, 31 and 1. You notice the Vaseline on their bodies. That's, they slap them down with a little Vaseline, let those punches slip off the bodies. Scheduled for 12, the World Championship in the late middleweight division. 
And we are underway. Some interesting action early on as we see how Rufus reacts to that first ever career loss, Jeff. Kevin looks a little tense here. Um, he said he was going to go right after him and uh, take it to him, but in this first uh, 30 seconds here, it looks like he's uh, he's a little tense. Doesn't look quite loosened up. Rick's just moving around, getting off some of those flashy kicks of his. He caught the, uh, Kevin did catch the kick of Rufus, knocking Rufus down. That will not count as a knockdown. That was a nice axe kick by Rufus, bringing the leg up over the head and coming down like an axe. Spinning back kick. There's a spinning back fist for Rufus, but Whaley L comes right back at him. Rufus is trying to do one of those jump spinning kicks. He is, he is a flashy kicker, and he has power in those kicks. Sometimes they're very deceptive. He also has a wicked left hand. See how Whaley L is just standing in front of him. He needs to be moving out of there. Whaley L, not the kicker of a Rick Rufus. His background is an Ishin Ru karate, traditional karate. They're not known for their high flashy kicks, but more basic kicking. And Whaley L with only four kicks at this point in the first round to 12 by Rufus. And uh, Whaley L had better get kicking or he'll be penalized. Well, he, he definitely is losing some points because uh, he doesn't have much time left. A precarious position, but Rufus dominating the first round. Really, L only had five kicks, Jeff. That is not good. Uh, as I said, he looked tense. He looked a little nervous, uh, even though he said he wasn't intimidated by uh, Rick Rufus. It seems like in this first round, uh, that definitely showed some intimidation. You notice in the corner here of Rick Rufus, there's Bob Lynch along with his brother, Jeff Rufus. Now, Willie L will have to make up those three kicks in the second round, and it's already cost him in the first. There was no reason for him to lose those points. That's just uh, a little nervousness. Willie L's corner, uh, Greg Owens and Kelly Croy from the Croy Boys Gym in Taylor, Michigan. So he'll lose a point for that last round, plus he has to make those kicks up around up this round or he'll be penalized again. So he needs to get in 11 kicks this round, not just eight. Difficult to kick when you're fending off Rufus, who has that foot in your face the entire round, it well, seems. Rufus kicks so much that uh, it's, it's hard to kick while he's kicking because he gets him up over your legs because he's so flexible. Missing with a roundhouse left. There's a back fist by Rufus. Roliel is shaking his head a little bit like he, he missed, but that did catch him pretty flush. Rufus just slipping out of there. He's very elusive. That no round kick combination and a round kick, yeah. That's one of the most beautiful combinations you'll see. He puts the hands one, two, three, and then there comes the leg right behind it. And Willie really, Allen better be cautious here. This roof is clearly has him befuddled. Willie really, is not even getting his footwork going. Uh, Rufus is totally confusing him here in this round. He said he was training, he was in shape, but uh, that doesn't necessarily win the fight for you. Well, Willie L has made up his kicks from the first round and get his eight in this round. Perfect's trying to set up the axe kick. Whenever Rufus is makes, whenever Rick makes him miss, 
Wailiel just falls off balance. Good back fist by Rufus as we take a break. The end of two rounds of this Royal Light Middleweight Championship. We'll be right back. The FFK World Light Middleweight Championship on the line. Kevin Whaley-L against Rick the Jet Rufus. Here's a, a damaging blow from uh, Rufus. It looked like it hit on the glove, so it didn't do a whole lot of damage there, but uh, Rick Rufus is definitely giving him a karate lesson. Here's another angle of it. See it catching the glove before it hits the head. Rick Rufus giving Whaley-L a lesson in Karate kicking and footwork. Well, the L's last fight, a uh, six round decision over Lamont Davis. About up in Hamilton, Ontario. You see how Rick's round kick kind of comes over and comes down. What he's trying to do is come up over the hands of his opponent and then come down on him with that round kick. There goes Ray now trying to put together a combination of punches. Look at him holding him behind the head there. Here's the ref, Paul Kears, warning him on that. Audience not liking that booing him. But that's what Wiley L is going to have to do if he wants to have a shot at this. He's going to have to get a little mean. He's going to have to get inside and not just stand out in front of him and be the nice guy. He's going to have to get a little mean and get in there and rumble a little bit with him. And Wiley L hits the deck there, having been swept by Rufus. Well, well, he's game. He's swapping with Rufus. Rufus landed at two good left hooks there. One inside, and then as he was chasing him, Rufus backing up and throwing a left. There's that patented reverse side kick of his right to the midsection. Wiley L's wondering, where is this guy? Hold still. Let me hit you. And you can see how Wailiel drops his gloves when he, uh, when Rufus kicks and just opens his head up for a uh, punching combination. Talking to people after they fought Rufus before, they're very surprised at the, at the power and the speed he has. When you watch him fight, he looks so smooth and relaxed. It doesn't look like he's landing a lot of, with a lot of power, but it's really quite devastating. All right, there's the end of the round. Rick definitely has control of this fight. Uh, Wiley L had one little action where he was inside, where he looked like he was figuring out how to get inside, but uh, he's still confused over there. Maybe his corner, Kelly Corey, or Greg Owens can uh, give him some insight. Here we see Bob Lynch and his brother Jeff giving him some instruction. Good crowd on hand here at the uh, Sheridan Lancaster, the uh, golf resort and conference center. Enjoyed our stay here. This is the place for a little golf, a little tennis, or even if you want to get out and do a little sightseeing in Amish country. There's a lot to do here. Here's Rick mixing up inside. And there's that left hook, just misses there. And then he chases him back and catches him with it. Buckled his knee just a little bit. And you see the good defense by Rufus keeping the gloves up and warding off those blows. Round number four, scheduled for 12 for the World Light Middleweight Championship. And Whaley L wailing away at that time and uh, missing awkwardly. Talking about the uh, Sheridan Golf Resort here, uh, I got a chance to play 18 holes yesterday. I didn't think uh, I would be able to do that here, but what a nice course. Good spinning back fist by Rufus, and Wailia wobbles on one knee. And speaking of golf, it looks like Rick is teeing off a little bit here on uh, Wailia. Oh, I knew you were going to get to that sooner or later. Got it written down on your collar or your cuff here. Well, I did shoot par yesterday, so I'm quite proud of that. Of course, that was 72 for the first nine. You saw the little tornado kick, they call that, where he does a jump spin in the air, but uh, missed that. But he's 10 of his 17 knockouts have been by kick. 
He is one of the most effective kickers, and you'll see kicks coming from every angle. You know, after 20 years in this sport, being on top of, the, of his game and being in since he was four years old, he is really the original karate kid, they call him. is way behind on his kicks, four at this point. And now, knowing that he has to kick, Rufus just sits back and waits. Rick is really giving him quite a lesson here, I believe, and a little bit of telling him what kickboxing and full contact karate is all about. You know, you see kids start gymnastics or things at four years old, and then by the time they get up to to their uh, 23 years old, you see it in, in action. And welcome back to ESPN Championship Karate. I'm Pat Scanlon along with the former light heavyweight champion of the world, Jeff Smith. Take a look at uh, Kevin Whaley-L walking into a left hand. Ooh, Rick just stepping inside that back leg. Perfect timing on that. They start with the back leg, one step inside, right on the button. Rick Rufus on the right, the world middleweight champions coming down a weight to take on Kevin Whaley L. Rick told me he just wants to fight. He'll fight a weight class below his. He'll want to fight a class above his. He doesn't care. He said he's not going to worry about any management or any fights getting set up. He said all he wants to do is fight and stay busy. After that loss, it's really affected him, and he felt in a positive direction because he said it helped him refocus on what his goals really were. Good left hand there, of course, Rufus, Rufus losing to Mark uh, Petrowski. First time in 32 professional bouts. five and an uncharacteristic lull in the action. It looks like Kevin is, it's a combination of, of tired and frustrated. You know, when you start throwing things and nobody's there and you keep kicking and punching the air, I mean, it, it drains you because you feel like, gosh, I don't have enough speed to catch this guy before he moves. I'm wasting my shots. So it gets, he gets that frustrated look on his face. And that's what Rick Rufus is famous for, is just frustrating people till they make certain mistakes. Look at Kevin. We've seen him fight before. He never fights like that, but he's just so frustrated he doesn't know what to do. And Rufus does have a small trickle of blood beneath the nose. Final seconds, round number five. You see Rick just slipping them left and right. A good look at Rick Rufus, pride of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. and his brother Jeff off the ropes for the trainers. Dave Jennings also helps out. Not the former giant punter, of course, but another Dave Jennings. That Jennings could kick, too. And Kevin GQ, Whaley L. Out of Dave, the Croy Dave, Boys gym. Dave Jennings is actually his manager, and uh, Bob Lynch is helping him out in the corner there also. Raliel standing at center ring as we begin round number six. Good spinning back fist by Rick Rufus. And here comes Kevin Raliel, a little hot dog move here. That's what he, he needs to get mad. He needs to do something to, to get him going. You know, I like to refer to it as a set of fire under them over there in the corner underneath their seat. But uh, when these guys get laid back and not doing anything, they just got to get in there and start swinging. 
if they throw enough stuff, maybe something's going to land and uh, put in the fight. Well, he said, you know, well, you know, did say about Rufus, his desire is no greater than mine, and uh, I respect him, but uh, his uh, 31 and one record is just a stat. Now Kevin has to back those words up. You saw, you saw Rick catch a low kick there. The, the center ref didn't step in and say anything. Unless he sees it, he cannot call it. So Rick just brushes it off and keeps going. Uh, unless it's an intentional blow below the belt, there would be no penalty anyway, but they would give him a chance to recover for a few seconds if he needed. Damaging front kick by Rufus. Is that jump spinning hook kick? Here's that tornado kick, crescent kick. A lot of work to throw a short left. Rick knows the audience likes those kind of kicks. Yeah, left-handed spinning back fist rattles Whaley out. Just when you think the kick is coming, then here comes the hand. One sets up the other as we come to the end of round number six. Wiley L better be careful ducking down, and he ducks down and lands one of those kicks. what the audience wants to see. Well, the crowd appreciative, and we are halfway there through round number six. And it was a clinic by this man, Rick Rufus. If Whaley L wants to, to have a shot, he has to continue fighting like he did at the end of that round, but he can't wait to the last 10 seconds. He needs to start that a little earlier. Look at that back fist. That one caught him flush. He's covering up his head. Let me out of there. There's the kick to the body. Hard kick. He pulled his arms in, but it looked like it still caught him in the body. Rufus is way ahead on the kicking department. 70 to 50. That's a lot of kicking. Round seven now. If anybody wanted to know what different kicks there are in karate, all they have to do is watch Rick Rufus because they'll see every one of them possible during his match. He likes to mix them up and throw all of them. Guelio on the left, Rufus on the right. Hey, Rufus trying to go for a sweep. This in the FFK World Light Middleweight Championship. Rick Rufus. Dropping down a weight class here. And so far, looks like he might have another title under his belt. Just fighting at 164. Well, the L coming in at 162. I feel it's always an advantage to the fighter to drop down a weight because with the weigh-in being the day before. Ouch. He got hung up in the ropes. There's that defensive footwork. Rick makes him miss and gets his foot tangled in the ropes in the process. But having that way in the day before the fight is what a beautiful jump reverse kick. Another reverse eye kick to the ribs. Another. And Rick almost uh, Ride him cowboy. landed in the line from our <laughs> judges. Final seconds, round number seven. We'll take a break and come back for more full contact karate on ESPN. And we're back at the Sheridan Lancaster Golf Resort and Conference Center. Whaley L missed his kicks again in that last round. That means he gets another point penalty and he has to make them up this next round. Look at that reverse side kick right to the midsection. Doubles Wiley L over. There's that round kick dropping in over the guards. Just missing. He really gets it up there to the elevation. 
This round number eight, scheduled for 12 for the World Light Middleweight Championship. You see Rick throwing reverse kicks off of both legs. Usually kickers tend to be one sided. They'll kick more with their left or they'll kick more with their right. But you'll see Rick mix them up with both. You see on his pants, the jet. He got that nickname from his speed in the ring. Being so much faster than his opponents. Even dropping down to this lighter weight. He still has the speed on those guys. Here, Whaley L's corner. Come on, Kevin, you got a kick. He's got four kicks this round so far. He's got something to make up from last round. Well, at this point, uh, he's, he's almost at a, at a point where I think he might uh, store it up and say, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be able to kick anyone. I'm going to save my energy for the hands. But I don't think he's reached that point yet. It just looks like that he's so frustrated that he does. Some fighters do not like to kick the air. When you kick and your opponent moves, it makes you feel kind of bad. So since Rick's moving, it's, it's making him not want to kick because he's moving. See, he's not there. So it frustrates you. And you say, hey, hold still. Ooh. There's that reverse side kick. And Raleigh goes down, final seconds of the round. Count this one as a knockdown. He needs some more kicks. And he'll come up short again this round. He needs one more just to get his next round. But then he needs to make up four from the last round. And Rufus can sense the kill. And Raleigh just his kicks again, he only came up with seven. So, he now gets a double penalty. He'll get a penalty for missing his kick in each of those rounds, and he'll also get an extra point for not making up the kicks. So, for Whaley L to win this fight on points would be a near impossibility at this point, I feel. Of course, not having access to the scorecards, but he definitely is going to have to knock Rick Rufus out. Watch this shot by Rufus, spinning back fist. And that click, clicked him right on the chin. Look at this reverse side kick right in the, that lower ribs, that kidney side. Does a lot of damage. So that might have been a 10-7 round for Rufus when you consider the knockdown and you consider the uh, lack of kicks by Whaley L. That was, uh, would have been scored almost a no contest round after those penalties. Round number nine. The World Light Middleweight Championship. And Rick Rufus has dominated his opponent, Kevin Whaley L. I'm Pat Scanlon, Sands Voice today with Jeff Smith. Another jump away reverse sidekick as he's moving in and lands it to the body. He's amazing with those moves. Well, Kevin apparently encouraged by landing a few punches. Kevin's trying to hold him, and then he goes to punch, and then Rick's not there. Warned again for holding behind the head, and Rufus answers with a spinning back fist. giving him another warning for holding the head. He can penalize him. Of course, at this point, it, it wouldn't matter much. He gets one more penalty because uh, he's going to have to win this by knockout at this point, I feel, anyway. Whaley all ducking underneath the reverse crescent kicks. Good right hook. I think Kevin Raleigh exclusively dealing with the punches at this point. You see what's happening here with Kevin now. He's he's getting hit now, and they're starting to take their effect. It's starting to hold him back where he doesn't want to throw anything. Okay, so this wraps up round number nine, and we'll be back with more after this.
Kevin Whaley-L giving up on the kicking in that uh, ninth round. Well, he knows at this point. Now, look at the difference in the kicks, 107 to 61. He has no shot at this point. He has only one, and that's to knock Rick out. And those chances do not seem real big at this point. I would like to see Rick move on in and, and put the pressure, because I think a constant flow of pressure by Rick Rufus would take Whaley-L out. Whaley-L trying to do it as a puncher. I'm sure his corner told him after that last round, you had no kicks, you have no chance except knock him out. So he's going to make a well, his last try efforts in here. He's got a couple more rounds to do it, but not much. So Rufus will have to be careful, not take any chances. Rick has expelled a lot of energy in this fight. You know, he's really been controlling this fight. All the kicking and punching, he's done 80% of it. So he's he still has enough power to knock this guy out, but uh, all he has to do, I think, is to follow it up rather than just landing one or two. He needs to just keep on, keep the constant pressure on him until he drops. But it looks like uh, Rick's strategy might be he wants some work. Some of these fighters uh, like to get in there and they like to have a long fight just to test their endurance and move around. You end the fight too quick, you don't get a chance to really uh, test your endurance. And a lot of Rick's fights have ended early. So maybe he wants to uh, do a little endurance work. Well, he's certainly up on his feet, still moving well. Latter stages of round number 10, scheduled for 12, a world championship. Full contact karate bout. Rufus slips away from the corner. I think uh, it looks like Rick's getting a little frustrated himself. He's saying, what's holding this guy up? I've hit him with everything. Coming to you from the Sheridan Lancaster Golf Resort and Conference Center. Really is a hotbed for uh, the martial arts and full contact karate. Big crowd on hand, uh, over well over 1,200. A standing room only crowd, I might add. That uh, they were sold out. And this is a standing room only crowd. Kevin Whaley-L can only hope for the knockout at this point as we get set for round number 11. There's a left hook by Rick and a right to the kidneys. Good uppercut. Back with another right jab. Rick has to probably feel at this point, uh, I've hit this guy with everything, he's still standing. Uh, but I don't think that's really it. I think he just needs to follow it up a little bit more and put about five or six of those things together rather than just one or two pops at him. Referee Paul Kier is doing a little housekeeping on the apron. And here we go with round number 11. It's FFK World Light Middleweight Championship. Pat, it looks like your voice is uh, Barely holding in there. We hope he can hang through with us here. Well, if Kevin Whaley-L can, so can I. And there he backs up Rufus onto the ropes. And Rufus may be in a little bit of trouble now. Well, I think this pressure by, uh, by Whaley-L will be the best thing for Rick, because that'll make Rick fight him a little harder. You know, sometimes you fight and the opponent doesn't fight you back. You know, you don't have as much uh, into it. But when the guy starts fighting back, it renews your Makes you get that second win and go back in there and take him on out. There's a spinning back fist that Rufus had uh, used successfully earlier in this fight. Well, Yell taking the kick and then trying to cover up and Rufus knocking the gloves away. You see how Rufus is just moving around, just moving and sticking. I think he's pretty much resided to saying that uh, he's just going to make this fight. Uh, if Wiley L wants to win it, let him come after him. He's already won it. He's just going to throw his techniques. He's not going to work any harder than he has to. He 
says, I'll get me a 12 round fight under my belt for a little endurance practice. Looking at this kind of, he's working out there like it's a workout, just a practice session. Well, Ray Liel has been forced to come at Rufus. Rufus building a lead early on and then able to uh, sit back. And we'll be back with round number 12 right after this. Welcome back to the Sheridan Lancaster. I'm Pat Scanlon along with Jeff Smith. The 12th and final round. This will be interesting to see if uh, Whaley Ella has been saving anything for this last round or if he's just already been so frustrated and so out of gas that he didn't have anything left anyway. The FFK World Light Middleweight Championship. Whaley Ella has to let it all out. Really, his only hope is an archive. Here's Rick. He ducked right into that kick. Whaley L saying it didn't hurt him, but he's still, his legs were a little rubbery. You saw him bouncing around. Let's see if Rick will finish him off here, or if it'll make Whaley L come back a little harder. He's holding on the head again. That's his second warning, Paul Gears is telling him. Nice double kick by Rufus. That's the kind of power Rick needs to land. Front kick. Nice reverse kick. He's got the whole repertoire. Wiley L still, still walking after him. Kind of half-heartedly. He doesn't look like he wants to get in there too much, but... I think Rick's taking the attitude that if you want it, come on after me. Good right-left combination by Rufus. Nice 360 round kick, reverse hook kicks. You, you, you've seen all the kicks here today. There's a good left hook. Nice hand combination by Rufus. You know, Kevin has taken about all he could give. Here's Rick. Crowd chanting him on here in the closing seconds. And here's Kevin still walking at him. Look at Rick. Here's the audience. They like, they like that display of technique. It was definitely an exhibition of technique. And Rufus uh, doing his part to incite the fans here. Rick definitely gave Whaley L a kickboxing lesson today. But you got to hand it to Whaley L. He, he withstood everything Rick, Rick gave him and kept getting up, coming back. He more than doubled his kicks. 149 for Rufus, 62 for Whaley L. More than doubled the kicks. Good workout for Rick Rufus. Okay, so we'll be right back with the decision right after this. The magic is back. What magic? Our announcer, Lee J. Nelson, is in the ring. Let's go to Lee J. now with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge one scores it 98-120. Judge two scores it 95-120. And judge three scores it 98-120. The winner and the world light middleweight champion of the world in the blue corner, Rick the Jet Rufus. One of the most lopsided decisions that you'll see, Rick Rufus dominating the younger Kevin GQ Whaley L to win his second FFKA championship. 
Rufus, of course, the reigning middleweight champion. And now he's got the light middleweight championship belt as well. Right now, let's go to Jeff Smith. I'm in the ring with our new light middleweight champion of the world, Rick Rufus. And for the presentation of his new world title belt, we have the president of the FFKA. Let's hear it for Terry Nye. All right, Rick, I'd like to congratulate you. Thank Two you world much. title fights. Thank you. Two belts. This is great. I just want one question I'd like to ask you. What do you want to do? Do you want to stay at 64 or do you want to go to 172? What do you want to do? Well, I'm going to hold on to both titles. I'm going to see where Rick Rufus uh, can get a better offer. You know, we're waiting for that rematch with Mark Piotrowski, the one uh, I lost my first fight to. And I, I just want you to know, Mark, that was a gift. I'm back. You didn't see 110% of Rick Rufus tonight. You saw just a little bit. And I'll tell you what, I've got, I've got the confidence back, and I want you, pal. Well, you definitely gave... Uh, well, Yale, a boxing kickboxing lesson today. You're, you, I think, threw every kicking technique in the book and landed it solid, as well as all the hand techniques. Uh, did you feel anything unusual about him? Did he, did he give you any power? Did you feel uh, he was intimidated, or wh why didn't he fight you? No, he, he was a great boxer, from what I understood. He, he boxed with the Kronk, uh, Tommy Hearns stable, and I'm sure he worked with those guys, and I gave him a great uh, credit. He came in two days' notice and proved he could take a punch, and uh, on top of it, he, uh, he stood in there with a the kickboxer and knew what he was doing. I'd just like to say one thing. This new belt around my waist I'd like to dedicate to my daughter, who's 14 months at home with her mommy. This one's for you guys. Well, it looked like the way he was moving, he would try to catch you, but he was totally frustrated. Did you feel every time he had thrown something, you were making him miss? And it just looks like, didn't look like he was out of shape. It just looked like he was so frustrated he couldn't throw anything. Well, in this game, I come here to hit and not get hit. That's why I have a face that's not black and blue. I can talk to you on a great note. And, uh, you know, uh, the name of the game is to frustrate him. I took him out of his game plan. He tried to close the distance by uh, staying on top of my kicks, and he... Uh, he found out he couldn't do that because I was just quicker than he was. And uh, I'll tell you what, I'm determined. I'm back with a new attitude. And that attitude is to stay on top. Well, we've got our new champion in the light middleweight division. We'll be interesting uh, waiting anxiously, Rick, to see which way you go with it because he does have both titles now. Uh, a lot of credit to him and to your corner. And now let's go to a break. Rick Rufus now owns two FFKA title belts. He won the World Light Middleweight Championship. He's already the middleweight champion. He beat Kevin Whaley Eld tonight, and he used probably every kick imaginable once he got inside that ring. Well, he definitely gave uh, Wally L a, a boxing kicking lesson. Uh, we saw all kinds of techniques, and I think totally confused Wally L. He didn't uh, have an opportunity to take advantage of anything that Rick did. Now, what do you think Rick, Rick will do? Which way will he proceed? Will he stay in the light uh, middleweight division or go back to the middleweight division? I think what it comes down to, it depends on uh, who the opponent is and where it's at and when it's at because he wants to fight. He wants to stay bu busy. He does not want to worry about managing and keeping up with that part. He just says, bring the fighter on, let me do my fighting. And as you said, that uh, sometimes champions love to collect belts, and uh, now he's got two. Well, he might jump up another weight and jump up a weight past that. Who knows? He's right in the, the line. He's young. He can gain or lose weight. It's, it's not very difficult for him. And he seems to be uh, very strong at this weight, didn't lose any speed. And that, that what happens, uh, that's what happens when you drop down sometimes to a lighter weight. You lose a little bit of speed or maybe a little strength because you had to lose the weight. But he definitely was not weak. He still had good technique and uh, as a matter of fact, hit Wiley L with about all of it. Okay, that's the story from here in Lancaster. For Jeff Smith, I'm Pat Scanlon.